The Blues Brothers, a 1980 musical comedy directed by John Landis, was shot in a secluded portion of Illinois State Highway 53 in Palatine, Illinois. Overcoming challenges and achieving the desired effect of the cars flipping over during the descent, the crew opted to dig a hole into the embankment, aiding the cars in flipping over upon impact. As per Dan Aykroyd, cocaine was allocated into the movie's budget to assist the cast and crew in staying alert during overnight shoots. Aykroyd mentioned that John Belushi particularly appreciated the effects, believing cocaine enhanced his performance. The initial script written by Dan Aykroyd was incredibly lengthy, and as a humorous gesture, he had it bound using the covers of the LA Yellow Pages. In fact, it was over 300 pages long, and the film was originally intended to be a two-part epic. But John Landis decided to cut down most of the script to make it suitable for a standalone film. During the soundtrack recording, Cab Calloway was required to re-record his popular track Minnie the Moocher at a higher quality than the original album. Upon entering the studio, he was ready to perform the disco version that had recently been released. But the filmmakers requested the original, and Calloway, albeit reluctantly, provided it. The dance scene outside Ray's Music Exchange featured a large crowd of people dancing in the street. Despite the intended summer setting, with most participants wearing summer attire, the reality was quite different. On that day, the temperature was bitterly cold, hovering around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. During its production, the movie was among the most costly ever made, with a budget of $30 million. To offer a comparison, Steven Spielberg's flop film 1941, released a year earlier, had a budget of $35 million. There were rumors of a friendly competition between Landis and Spielberg to see who could make the more expensive film. Interestingly, both directors were friends at the time and made cameo appearances in each other's movies. Notably, both films also featured Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, and John Candy. Luckily, the Blues Brothers recovered their huge investment, proving they could bring in the tickets as long as they were, quote, on a mission from God. While the film is a light-hearted comedy, it does have dark moments. One of them is the subplot of the Nazis. Much of it was inspired by real-life events. While sitting in their car and in traffic due to a Nazi march, Jake and Elwood inquire about the situation from a cop. He informs them, quote, those bums won their court case, so they're marching today. Elwood dismissively remarks, Illinois Nazis, to which Jake concurs, saying, I hate Illinois Nazis. This references a real-life event from the mid-70s when the Nazi Party of America planned a demonstration in Skokie, Illinois. Skokie had a significant Jewish population, including a large number of Holocaust survivors. After local authorities imposed various obstacles to prevent the march, the Nazis took the matter to the Supreme Court. In 1977, the court ruled in favor of the Nazis' First Amendment right to freedom of assembly. Despite the legal victory, the group held their Nazi rallies in Chicago instead of Skokie. This scene and the many scenes that mock Nazis was meant to mock the real-life groups that were spreading their influence across Illinois. The Legacy of the Blues Brothers Over the years, the Blues Brothers has maintained its popularity through frequent reruns on TV, home media, and the internet. Clips of iconic scenes like the car chase through the mall or the spirited performances at the Palace Hotel Ballroom continue circulating online. The film's impact extends beyond the realm of entertainment as it's inspired musical acts and even fashion trends. The signature black suits, fedoras, and sunglasses of the Blues Brothers have become iconic symbols associated with the film. Additionally, the Bluesmobile, a battered former police car, has become an emblematic vehicle in cinema history. Blues Brothers is celebrated for its unique combination of comedy, music, and social commentary. The film's satirical take on contemporary issues like urban decay and political corruption adds depth to its entertainment value. Audiences appreciate the film not only for its humor, but also for its underlying messages. As for the sequel, Blues Brothers 2000, released in 1998, it faced more mixed reception. While it attempted to recapture the spirit of the original, the absence of John Belushi, who passed away in 1982, was keenly felt. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite scene from the Blues Brothers movie? Let us know in the comments section below.